Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting episode and I have said exciting again. I always say exciting because I preempt the excitement. I'm Phyllis Founders and this is a little bit of lip with me and uh, a very exceedingly, spe- I've called you exceedingly special. Excellent. I'm excited. <laughs> I, well, I might do that. I'm really excited. <laughs> Thanks for having me. How's that for a start? It's good, but but I'm still introducing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, going. I'm still. Gonna, I'm not here yet. Um, no, we we haven't even heard from you yet. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's okay. <laughs> I'm here alone, folks, because I couldn't get anybody to sit next to me. I'll do it. Oh, hang on. I'll do Hi. it. Hi, are you Paul? <laughs> apparently, Paul, I. Um, apparently, I am. You you are Paul. Are you Paul most days? Um, most days yep. I am, unless yes. I'm lost. Unless you're lost. And then I don't really quite know. Hashtag lost. Yes. Everybody, this is the incredible Paul Mercurio. Welcome to Elle. Oh, come come sit you. next to me. Yes, yes, because I'm all alone. And look, you know, if you don't have to sit too far away from me. Well, what I'm going to do is as yeah. the interview progresses and I feel more comfortable. <laughs> okay. Oh, eventually I'll push you off that end of the... I was going to say. I'll just be lying here. Okay, because you don't want to peak too soon. No, on I don't. No. no, I don't. So. We, we just, we just want to go slow, just kind of ease you in, com- get you all while. comfortable. Pardon? It's been a while. It's been a while. I, well, not only since I've seen you, but yeah. since I've done an interview. And so, since um, you've been under all this kind of... It's a very glamorous place. I, I always wanted to work... Um, at Fox Studios. Yes. When they first opened, I came here for a few auditions and a mm-hmm. few functions, mm-hmm. but to actually be here now, yes, filming. Yes. I've you, finally made it. You, you have made it, because you've made it with me. Yep. You yep. kind of sort of, I'm just going to lay it out here. Yep. Because <coughs> I'm going to cough. You kind of sort of gave me a backward compliment. Oh, did I? Before, Sorry. yes. Because you said, I've always wanted to come and work oh. at Fox Studios. And I went, oh, well, here you are. And you said, well, on a blockbuster movie. I was, to be honest, I was... I was so thanks. I was hoping to be paid. Um, <laughs> well, d- you're not being paid for no, this? No, I'm doing this because... Um, I'm doing this for you as a favour. Oh, you are. Out of love. Because, you're, also because, because you're beautiful. Thank you. But I'm interested in the concept. And, um, you know, we spoke a few weeks back. We did, yes. And you yes. told me a bit about what what this was. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I got, thought to myself, that sounds weird. No, no. Weird. <laughs> No, it sounded interesting. It keeps coming, it folks. Sounds, well, it okay. is. It's just, you know, I'm really intrigued. And I have no idea where um, it's going to go. Or And are we allowed to, we're allowed to talk about the word? Yes, we are allowed yeah. to talk about the word because it's hashtag Ellie's for... Lost. Lost. And since we spoke about three weeks ago, I've mm. tried not to think about it. Mm-hmm. Why? Um, I, well, I, I want to see um, what comes out yeah. spontaneously in this moment. As so opposed to... Um, uh, turning up and going, well, I've thought about this and yes. I think we should, you know, this is what it is, you know, it's... Um... Similarly, what I can't stand, and I think interviewers do it a lot, and it just, it, not much boils my bile, but this really does. When I'm asking you a question and then I'm going, right, okay, so anyway, um, and then what's your, and mm. that there is no intimacy, there's no connection in that sort mm. of conversation. In fact, it really <laughs> is just... <laughs> Is that, did, was that the wrong, wrong timing? It was okay, maybe I'll a bit back. too kind Where of... Where are your bo- questions, well, by the way? I, 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 I am the question. Okay. Well, and you are the answer, <clears throat> Paul. Well, I don't know about that. I think let's just go on a journey and see what happens. Okay. You know, when I said to people that I was going to be having a conversation with you today, the reactions were along the lines of, oh, my God, I had a huge crush on him. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It's, I, yeah. I, you know, I go to the supermarket and shop. And yes. And I love people come up to me and go... My mum used to love you. <laughs> and I go, used My great grandmother used yeah. to, yeah, right. Used to? No. Oh, okay. Anyway, happened on the plane, in fact. As um as I got off the plane, yeah. one of the um ladies, well, I don't know what you call them anymore. Can I call them a lady? It's well, a person that how, works on the plane. Oh right, there's all I'm this just, political I'm, correctness yeah, now. I'm, I'm lost about all of that. So you are just right. You that. Hashtag anyway, lost, yeah. um, mm. I we had a quick chat and she went my mum loves you. And I went, oh, thank God she loves me. <laughs> how how, like do, you, how do you react to that? I mean, do you, do you find... <clears throat> okay, so the glare of the spotlight, we'll mm. call it the glare, because it's not always particularly pleasant, mm. and fame and all the monstrosities that come with it. Was that something that you were able to deal with in a very um, dignified manner, <laughs> as opposed to some of the current um, celebs? Well, yes, I was married and I had two kids. Um, when and also I was just, I was kind of mildly or, or 
famous back in the old dance days. Mildly know, famous. How mildly, can you be well, mildly it, famous? Well, it's really interesting because I used to be <coughs> really famous, and now and now the spotlight's <laughs> just become a bit of you know it's, it's a torch with AA batteries that are fading. I think so, you've just offended Mark, who is sorry, our Mark. beautiful DOP. Because look at all these lights for oh, the no. spotlights. Okay, just for the moment, but <laughs> okay. before I got here, it was a torch. <laughs> there was the a torch. Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Um, I think I was just lucky at that my feet were on the ground. Mm. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, I've read some interviews occasionally by the director of the film, Strictly Boring, and um, he. Mr. Kind of, L. <laughs> Mr. L. Mr. L. And he um, mentioned that my work ethic was very different to an actor's. Because I'd been on stage for 10 years, and you, you get up, you go to work, you go on stage night after night, you right. know, sometimes nine shows a week. And I think that helped me with um, going to Hollywood and all that, because I was a worker. And I didn't get overly. Um, indulgent, or I didn't even really take that much notice of the fame. Can we get you anything? Mr Mercurio, can we get you anything? Would well, you like... I always thought that was fake. I remember yeah. when I turned up to my first Hollywood movie, right? Um, which ended up bombing, because you can't make an S&M family movie, sadly. Oh, you can't? No, you can't. We tried. <laughs> In fact, we did, but it didn't work. Speaking of which, do, do, we, do we need the duct tape now? Yes. Right. <laughs> um, and I turned up on set, and yeah. I was the lead with Dana Delaney. Right. And, you know, Gary Marshall movie, all of yep, that. Yep. And there were people on set, and it was, it was a make-up day just to check how things were looking. And I was standing around, and people were G'day mate. Well, I wouldn't say g'day mate, but mm. hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and um, no, like one, that. no one paid me much attention. Mm. And then eventually someone said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm here for makeup. Oh, you're a makeup artist. And I said, no, no, I'm in the movie. So they didn't oh, know no. who they you said, were? No, they said, what part are you playing? I, I said, oh, I told them the character. I can't remember him now. And they went, oh, come sit on this chair. Come and do, can I get you? Because I was the lead. Right. And all of a sudden the way, and I don't like that. You either treat me, you know, as... Yeah as it is, yeah. or just because we're all working on a film together, just because I'm the lead doesn't make me any more special. The only thing, and I'm going to do this today, mm -hmm. is when catering comes, I like to get to the front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason I like to get to the front of the line is because normally I'm first on set later on. So you eat, you get yourself ready, and that's about the only advantage I think I took. Well, we have um, chocolate cookies and we've got wraps and we've got popcorn. So, popcorn, you and popcorn. Yeah, I'm, I'm into popcorn because I think it's a really healthy, nutritious it snack. It is, with lots of butter on it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's got to have butter. I made popcorn the other day with my, um, I make spice rubs, so I don't really mean to plug my beerlicious range of rubs. No, he um, really does mean to <laughs> do a lot of plugging. My yes. beerlicious range of rubs. Right. Um, and I made popcorn with my beef rub on it. Right. Delicious. Really? Hot, but spicy. See, but you're far too spicy for me. I mean, in terms of the culinary side of things. The mm. other side, we haven't explored that yet because you're still too far away. Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe just be a bit more subtle. Actually, how you lump do that. here that's stopping me in <laughs> no, these lips. No, it's just the middle of Elle's lips. Okay, it's like, well, we'll get there eventually. I can come closer to you. Excellent. But then, but I mean, is that too forward? If well, I can... just, uh, we're still, we haven't even started talking about <laughs> lost. <laughs> no, we haven't. But we're, <clears throat> but we're not lost because we are so found. Ah, but I disagree. Really? Mm. And it's probably the one thought I did have that kept creeping in about the whole idea. And even in the taxi coming mm -hmm. here, I went, what would it be, and I know we're talking about lost, yep. what would it be like to be found? And I kind of thought, boring. But it's a really on, interesting idea. But hang on a second, because when you say, what would it be like to be found, immediately I'm thinking spirituality. And I'm thinking, you know, things that are not of this world. But is that uh, where you're going? If I was found, I would think I'd be sitting on the beach and I'd be quite at ease and at peace. and and completely comfortable and yes, you know, kind of spiritual, I'll be doing my Tai Chi and, but it's kind of like, I just worry that there wouldn't be maybe any more inspiration, maybe no more searching, maybe, maybe no more journey. Because to me, that's what Lost is about. Anything left to hope for maybe, or not? No, I think if you found you've, I, 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 <laughs> we're talking about the wrong word. I think you'd be completely um, in your centre. And, but, but I wonder after that what happens. And that's what I like about being lost. So, so, so you're presuming now that we're all lost. But I'm not lost, presuming. Okay. You are saying that we are all lost. I, well, yeah, I think so. It's, it's that idea that um, being lost means that we search for something. And it's that search for something that um, is where we make great discoveries about mm -hmm things and stuff and ourselves and spirit and, and that sort of thing. 
So when, when things don't go quite to plan in life, and we've all been there, mm -hmm. we may still be there. <laughs> we may still be right Whoops. smack bang in the middle of yep, I just don't want it. this interview here to finish because then I've got to go back out to that space. Well, but, but you've just said that there is positivity and there's Absolutely. optimism and there's, and there's the potential for great discovery in that feeling of being lost. Mm. And, and I, in the process of being and lost. And in the process of being lost. But sometimes, because this is not about giving it the negative spin. No, absolutely. I don't see any of that as negatives. Right. I see But that when as... you're in that lostness, because yeah. I find that when I suddenly become aware of, oh my God, I feel so lost. Yep. And it's a feeling that's very close to me right now. Mm. It feels like I'm standing on the edge of an abyss, but I make friends with that abyss. Is mm. that what you're talking about? Um, yeah. Yeah, that, there's nothing to fear in that, you know. Um, I love jumping on my motorbike or getting in the car or even if I'm in a different town, I go places and I have no idea where I'm going and mm -hmm. basically I get lost. And it's, there's that kind of element of discovery. And there are people that find that idea of just going and getting lost too frightening to do, too fright because they need security, because they need protection, you know, there's those things. But you need to kind of strip away all that stuff and allow yourself... Um, I love that when people say, oh, just get lost in the moment. Right. Or get lost in the music <laughs> or get lost in that dish. But you're They're very positive things. When we spoke and you said, what's the word? Lost came to me. Hashtag yeah. lost came to me. Which I love because that's exactly what, I mean, that resonated with me. And that's mm. an oft used term which can get a little bit wanky, mm. dare I say. But yes, that, that word immediately jumped out at me and I'm so glad you mm. brought that up. And keeping the, the positive spin was something that you said you wanted to do in this interview. Right. And conversation. So that, sorry, oh, this conversation. conversation. That's because I'm not getting paid. <laughs> it's an interview. No. Um, it's all um, about the money with you. It, well, yeah. um, now, my train of thought was I looked at this idea of the word and I looked at of, of what it meant and then I tried to look at the negatives. Okay. I couldn't find any. Really? Mm. So even when you've been... And I'm hesitant to go a little I've bit dark, there. but I yeah. will go there just for a little bit, mm -hmm. just in the context of this conversation. So when you have been lost in a place that is not particularly light, you're not lost in the music or the moment mm. or the performance, mm. and it's darkness. Well, I would say you're lost in that moment with that, you know, and um, that's a shocking place to be and uncomfortable and frightening and mm. all those things. But... Um, you've only got one choice to move out of it, allow yourself to be lost so you can discover where to next or so that you can, so that you're able to move away from it because... When did you experience that? Oh, I mean, I've experienced it plenty of times. I mean, a few years ago, I was, it was pretty dark, you know, as we spoke, you know, you know the realities of the torchlight being bright or whatever or, and work, you know, um, you get, you can get to, uh, and in a sense, those places are places of despair. I don't think they're places of being lost. I think, okay. I think it's okay to be lost. It's when we soak into some of the other things that um, may want to accompany it, like, you know, despair and fear and all those things. But I see the, the idea of being lost as a challenge or, it's like perfection. I don't believe in perfection. Well, there's you no know, such thing. There isn't. Mm. So when someone says, give me 120%, I'll go, <laughs> what about just 100? Or 98.2? Well, depending on my mood. Okay. But you know, 100, but you can't give more than 100%. Even though I can be lost, I, I know I said to you, I'm still able to lead by example. I'm still able to find my positivity. I'm still able to express my anger and other things, mm -hmm. but I'm free to do so. It's when you entrap yourself in another environment such as despair or fear or jealousy or rage or whatever else it is that um, you get stuck. I don't think that has anything to do with being lost. How do you find then your joy in being lost? Oh, it's spontaneous. It's lovely. It's this, it's, um, it's a, there's a freedom, mm -hmm. you know, to say, it, you know, it's, oh, what's the word? You know, you, you completely give over to it, to, to, that moment, you're not encumbered by anything else. So being lost, I think it's quite a powerful place to be because you are unencumbered. You're free to discover. You're not, you're not 
holding stuff and dragging your baggage with you. It's interesting to me, though, that you use the word powerful. Mm. It's a powerful place to be when you are lost mm. because I think most people, when they hear the word lost and when they feel lost, mm. feel completely powerless because you have no but, control, then you're, you're lost. But are they lost? So are they using the wrong word? Right. Because, again, I try not to think too much about hashtag lost. <laughs> um, hashtag L is for lost. Sorry, hashtag yes. L is for lost. Hi, I'm Paul Mercurio, and this is hashtag, <laughs> hashtag L. Hi. And no, um, Can we do that again, actually? Because that was, I mean, okay. really. Hi, I, I, I'm Paul Mercurio, and this is hashtag L for lost. <laughs> and not the movie or the documentary. No, um, really, no. Yeah, again, I honestly didn't want to think about it too much until we sat here today. And um, it is something that I've always done. I jump on my motorbike and go for a ride and get lost. And in doing so, you, you come across a beach or a cliff with beautiful views. You might find a great coffee. You might, you know, you discover things. And um, even though you're going, I have no idea where I am. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm experiencing me in, in a real moment. And you're lost in that moment. Yeah, I'm free in that moment. Free in that moment. Do you think there's um, a lot of fear attached to being lost in love and the powerlessness that is attached to that? When you say lost in love? Yeah. How do you mean? You mean being lost in the power of love, of loving someone? Or I love being... that, lost in the power of love. Yes. Isn't that a wonderful place to be? Yeah. <laughs> but there's also, there's, again, there's this sense of powerlessness because you're vulnerable. Love that. I'm an actor. Yep, I am. <laughs> and one of the things that I love most about um, acting mm. is completely giving over my power to the character's power and completely, unconditionally letting go. And that to really kind of... Because acting is actually telling a lie. Because if I'm playing Jeffrey, then it's Paul pretending to be Jeffrey. And so, and I love it the is. idea that acting is lying, but you've got to get to such, such a pure moment of it, and not like Donald Trump does. You it's, it's, it's not, see, and, and I've heard this argument before about acting. I'm not sure that it is strictly about lying. I use the word, Mike, did I just use the word strictly? strictly? Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, it's happening yep. without us even um, knowing. So you can't, you can, you can take the boy out of Strictly. You can't take the Strictly out of the boy. <laughs> so um, I love that there's no script. It's the best, it's so freeing. So a, life lived, a life lived lost is a life willing to be found. I don't know. But I love that, mm. I also love that. So acting, people say, and you've just said that it's about lying, right? But, but I would counter and say that to, in, in order to give a performance that's full of integrity mm. and you truly inhabit that character, mm. you have to be true to yourself yeah. and you have to bring truth no, to it. I mean, how... You have to be true to the character. Okay, true to the character, therefore... You have to completely abandon yourself. Right, so, so how is that lying? I'm not sure that... Well, because at the end of the day... Superficially, yes, yeah, okay, so but it's not... No, well, you've got to find a greater truth, but you've got to be completely lost in that character completely and utterly lost, unconditionally lost. And then when that character speaks, it's true. But I love the idea that you still can't get past the fact that I'm pretending to be someone else. So ultimately it's a lie. But Paul Mercurio wasn't strictly pretending to be Scott Hastings, um, was he? Well, I, was, I guess I was fortunate. Um, that's the other side of it, in acting, in performing, in telling a story. Mm. We all have stories and we, you know, part of you draw on your stories to bring to life other people's stories. So when I say you've got to completely abandon yourself, I mean, you, deep down there's, there's still you. Right. Each of us is capable of everything. Right. So um, if you can get lost in that place, then you can bring that out. I mean, I could be a, a lover, a murderer, a, a farmer, a goat herder. You know, you, mm, mm. each of us ha is able to be all of those things. But because you were already living your truth as this incredibly talented and gifted dancer, was it easier? Ex dancer. Oh, but unless you're talking strictly. Yeah, we're talking strictly, strictly, um, strictly back then, strictly mm. in the past. W was it easier for you to step into that role because you were already well, that man? Yes, I guess you know. I want to kind of try and fight this idea, but I guess you're right. 
because at that stage I was dancing my own steps, I was choreographing, I was mm -hmm. about to start my own ballet company. So if I was going to step into a role that I could draw on my experience from quite um, yep. it's like cream on the top of the milk, mm -hmm. I didn't have to get down the bottom of the bottle mm. to discover it, mm -hmm. um, then then yes, it was a much easier role and the perfect role for me to, to do. I mean, no one else should have played that role no. in a sense. Um, because I knew it intimately already. Um, did I still lie? Did I still get lost in the character? Uh -huh. Did I? You know, of course, I did. But did you find aspects of yourself in Mr. Hastings? Um, well, he's a very different character. I mean, you know, Scott was. It wasn't hard to understand Scott, but um, I didn't live his life. Scott also, if I can remember correctly, there was a lot of fear attached. I think, because he. Uh, I think the fear was, was everyone else. Don't dance your own steps, Missy Moo. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. don't you dare, don't you dare go out in your own limb. Don't, don't get lost in that silly stuff. You know, and that's the other thing about um, lost, isn't it? People, people don't. I think people fear other people getting going out there and being lost because they themselves are too scared to take that step. Absolutely, it completely challenges them. Mm. So anytime you go out on that limb, because that's where all the fruit is. Mm. Um, immediately you are challenging someone else's status quo. Yeah. And don't do that. Don't you do can't that. get lost. Oh my God. Mm. Um, I saw this wonderful talk the other day um, on Netflix with Brene Brown. Have you heard of you know, Brene Brown? Oh, yeah. The Brene. Brene. How Brene. Is she? Oh, we're like this. It's incredible. So she, all right. So she gave an amazing TED talk on vulnerability. Mm. But in this particular, um, uh, uh, we we'll call it a one hour special on Netflix. She talks specifically about never take advice about bravery from someone who's just not living a brave life. Mm. And there's a big difference between courage and comfort. And any time you choose courage over comfort, be prepared that when you are in that arena of vulnerability, that you are going to get beaten up mm. and bloodied and, and knocked down. And the whole point is to just keep getting up mm. and feeling lost but being comfortable with that i think um i think being lost is better than you know being overly courageous and getting beaten up all the time but um you know it's still vulnerability though absolutely yep and i think and that's i'm not sure if i used that word before but that's a word i really like in terms of um living um acting you know you need to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and um again in being vulnerable there's freedom and strength? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it takes an en enormous amount of strength to allow yourself to be vulnerable. But can you see that just by purely, by virtue of the fact that you're sitting here with me and we're talking about some pretty intimate, mm. scary kind of subjects, mm. that there are people watching this, seeing you and this sort of conversation in a whole different light? Mm. It's a lovely byproduct, isn't it? Because we could just be doing this over the phone. Absolutely, which it. we have done. Yes. But that's the point of this show, and this yep. is the point of this sort of conversation, and why I adore it. Mm. So. I think. Um, as and I, you in the process. Thank you. Oh, I think, as, um, as I said, you're allowed to be completely lost, and you can still lead by example. So, you know, there's just because you're lost, it doesn't mean you, you, are hopeless. Just because you're vulnerable or lost in your vulnerability, it doesn't mean that you still don't make an impact on the world. So let me ask you this. Uh oh. <clears throat> so cut, you have. <laughs> We're not going there. Yes, we. Oh, yes, we are. Okay. Um, so in the very scant research that I did, because I don't believe in reading up research. I... It's like. Okay, yeah, you did this, Well, that's that. good. You probably didn't get to the nude photo, so... Well, I oh, did, actually. Uh, that, that was in my immediate protocol. Excellent. Thanks immediate. very much. And can I say, you <laughs> rocked that G-string. Well, thank you very much. Oh, no, that film. <laughs> no, I actually didn't. I've got no clue what you're talking about. No, I'm, actually, anyway. Actually. So, Will Smith. Yep. In his current incarnation as a big blue genie. Oh, okay. Okay, so he arrives on our set right now and he gives you one wish and he says... I'm going to give you the role of a lifetime. Forget that other little dancey flick that you did a couple of decades ago. Some other incredible movie that will put you on the map in a mm. way that will blow your mind. Mm. So you take the role. Oh, okay. I was going to have to role. tell you what it is. No. Thank God you take, I couldn't think of it. No. Yep. So you take the role. The movie is a huge success. Mm. Now it's Paul Mercurio. He's everywhere. You cannot, 
bloody Paul McCurry uh, gets everything. He's everywhere. <laughs> Open the papers, a thing. David Letterman is calling you. Be on my show. Mm. The whole. The, I'm calling you. You. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, take so you're not Sorry. taking my calls. Yeah. But I got all these Phyllis witnesses. Who? What? <laughs> oh, Don't Rude. worry, that's happened to me. Um, you, you and I are connected now because yep. we've been yep. here, and yep. so yeah, and it's all on camera. So, how different do you think you'll approach that level of fame and adulation versus um, it, when you're in your twenties? None of what you just said excites me. Interesting. Really. Um, as you go through that idea, none of that kind of appeals to me. Really, it's just. Um, where was I? I was at the airport yesterday, mm. flying here. Wow. Okay. And part of me was slightly disappointed that I was sitting there and no one kind of went, oh, that's Paul McCurio. Because I used to get I used to get chased down the street and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. But then the other part of me was like, cool. Um, I just want to do good work. You know, if if fame's a byproduct, I can deal with that. Um, I would just like to do good work. What does good work look like for you? I don't know. Um, Making money and paying the rent would be good because it has been a struggle over the last few years. Mm. Um, artistically, though. Artistically, it's just look. I don't know because that's the whole. Everything's changed. Um, I used to do guest spots on TV shows, mm. and artistically they were terrible because it wasn't about you acting. It was about you supporting the lead right. characters. Right. Right. Um, I did a little movie a few years ago and. Um, called a silent agreement and um, it was it was fantastic because mm. spiritually and artistically it was completely spot on what you described I mean I'd love to do that movie that you described mm. but I don't really want to have to deal with all the fake kind of hey, go on, it's you know, Paul Mercurio all welcome that sort of stuff. and that's why I'm doing this interview <clears throat> too because it's about <clears throat> it's it's actually about something that means something you know it's not coffee and cake or it's not um it's down deep it's not surface level so and all that fame stuff is just surface level because as soon as you're no longer a grade you're b grade and you're c grade and you know you don't um if you get lost in a grade you're in a lot of trouble and i you look at people that do get lost in a grade can fame. you spot them can you spot the oh, lost a graders just, you read them in the about them in the paper, taking drugs, doing this, breaking okay, so up. That, that little you know, it, right. Yeah, it's just it's um, there's nothing to Kardashians. There's nothing to empower you it, within that. Mm. You know, so to stay out of it is much more important. And I've lived it, so I can kind of say that. I mean, it was great when I was in Hollywood and opened doors and getting good money and all that sort of stuff. But that's still the super. That's the superficial stuff. I would rock up to an event with my wife and um, the first thing that would happen is they'd come and say, G'day, hi, Andrew, have look great, come and have a chat. Boom, gone. And you they know? take your wife yeah, away. Yeah, so there's a whole lot of stuff that um, is not of interest. Um, I'm gladly lost within uh, what I want next, but I would like to find it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm free, you know what I mean? It's, right, absolutely. Um, so that's okay, but yeah. So, so is there such a thing as being lost in obscurity? Absolutely. Is that where you think you are right um, now? Yes, but that's the same as saying, um, uh, what was the word we used before? Um, we've used many oh, words, used word. unencumbered, no, uh, uh, despair. Despair. The, yes. So it's, it's the negative in, connotation. Yes. Right. Yeah. So lost in obscurity. Loss is a lovely word, and you can put all these other attachments to it mm -hmm. that change it, right? Etc. But yeah, there are moments where I'm lost in obscurity, and sometimes that's a pleasant thing, and sometimes um, the fear stuff comes in because it's about what's what is going to happen next. I wonder if um, we concentrate too much on being found. Then I don't know what to say to that. I I love that so much that I just need to keep quiet. Right. Well, that's the end of the interview. I <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to talk, <laughs> no, you're in big I just, trouble. No, no, no. What, what I, I, what could I love. Could someone get me <laughs> you some could, spoons, please? You could also dip me because we've discussed that <laughs> earlier. <laughs> no, but no, I, I needed to put a pause there mm. because nothing needed to be said. Well, maybe we're finished and we should dip. <laughs> no, do you want to yeah, dip? Do want to be, I don't, I don't think we can go any further than <laughs> just that little bit. So, look, lovely. Now, thank you. You just step across One. here oh, and I'm just oh, going oh, to. Oh, oh. 
like that. And you can finish the show. <laughs> throw to the ending. Throw to the ending. Hashtag okay. L. Wait, because you're seeing all my chins like this. Oh. <laughs> you can't hold me. Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> Thank You're you very beautiful. much for having me on the show. Mwah. Mwah. You're a delight. All right. I don't feel like we've even finished. Well, um, yeah, I think that's good. I'm going to really? go get lost now. Oh, it's good. Okay. Bye. Everybody, if <laughs> I'm going to see you for myself and just say that if you... <laughs> I'm going to carry on, damn it. This is my show, my outro, and I'm going to say that if you have anything that you'd like to share with me on L via email, actually, no, it's not email, write to me at P.O. Box 713, Kensington, New South Wales, Australia, the greatest country on the planet, in my humble opinion. But you've just been watching uh, Paul Mercurio. Paul can just come back for me, and I've got one more thing to say. I can't find my taxi. <laughs> <laughs> he will never work in this town again, folks. He's off to LA. Um, I just want to say that, um, you know, he was lost, but I'm found us. So. Oh, I'll tell his <laughs> That's very good. Did you like once that? Was, once was lost, but now is found us. <laughs> I'm going to give you a big fat kiss for that. Thank you. I love you. That Look right there. For everybody, Wi-Fi kisses. Sh shall I show you how to do Wi-Fi kisses? Like this. Oh. Try it. Or maybe what, on your camera. <laughs> My Wi-Fi is not very good. I need NBN. <laughs> I lost my signal. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>